This virtual trustee forum is for our board meeting that will be held on October 10th and 11th. Thursday night, we are expecting both of our deans from the dental schools to give their reports and um, where they're at for this year. And then on Friday, we will be having a full agenda. Thanks to all that have attended last Friday's leadership forum. We had 116 attendants at that meeting. And um, so far the post surveys are very positive. Our next leadership forum will be scheduled uh, on September of 2020. The final date is still yet to be selected, but we will be doing that soon. On this meeting this evening, we have myself, um, Dr. Margaret Gingrich, president of the Michigan Dental Association. We also have several of our board of trustee members. We have Dr. Eric Knudsen, who will be speaking on the 2020 MDA budget. We have Dr. Vince Benavigna. He will be speaking on the ADA due simplification and the policy on electronic prescribing. We have Dr. Vince Lizio, and he will be speaking on the policy on workforce and the policy on assignment of benefits. And we have Dr. Mike Mayhofer that'll be speaking on the policy of student loan repayment and the policy on permanent revocation of license. Um, we will be taking questions at any time and you may enter your questions by pushing the Q and A that is where all of your other control panels are. We will give time after each presentation to answer any questions and again at the end. So let's get started. The first is I start with um, generative discussion on membership. We are going to be talking about our trends in the MDA and ADA. So far the MDA or the member trends um, that we were given were from 2000 to 2018. And it shows that there has been some vari variability in the market shares over time and that the MDA has consistently had higher market share compared to the ADA. Diversity in Michigan's dental profession has grown over the last 18 years, but not as strongly for the MDA due to lower market share for women and especially for dentists of diverse racial and ethnic background. The largest portion of non-members are in our four largest components located in the Detroit area. But of these, Oakland is experiencing the most consistent increase in market share. We have had several um, membership surveys go out recently and resources document the MDA growth in various membership categories such as active, active life, retired, and retired life. And there'll be more on what those different classifications are for our members. Um, the greatest segment with the greatest growth is active life and then it's followed by retired life. We have seen some drop in the number of active members since 2011 or 2001. Um, one of our pre-member or one of our surveys that we sent out was for member segment um, and also for the pre-retirement survey. The pre-retirement survey was conducted to support the strategic plan goal of meeting the needs of the late stage dentist. And the survey revealed that a large percentage were already working part-time. The average age was 63, but it was within about what we figured would be the five-year time of when they would be retiring. 90% said that the amount for the MBA dues in retirement um, for full retirement was 15% and 0% for the retired life was appropriate. 86% of these members intend to maintain their membership. We also had a survey that went out on retired members and most had retired between the ages of 65 and 68. And although there were a few that were significant, significantly older, some of them as late as 80 and some retired as young as 52, about half practiced part-time prior to retirement. Um, we will be discussing this in ways that we can also increase our membership in some of these areas and see where the board takes us. Is there any questions on that? Seeing none, 
We will move on to Dr. Eric Knudsen for the 2020 MBA budget. Eric? Hey, thanks, Margaret. Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, from the UP, it's no snow yet, so we're excited about that. Uh, I'll be speaking about the, the proposed budget. Uh, we began back in the spring of 2019 on this budget, and we've continued on for the past six months. Um, kind of want to remind everybody that the MBA does not have one set of guidelines for the budgeting process, like forward budgeting or zero-based budgeting. We, we incorporate several of these. The, the key st strategic priority is our goal is to offer a member-driven budget. That's uh, main missions. Um, this year we expect revenues of $6,781,016 and expenditures of $6,780,473, which would net result would be a surplus of $543. Now I'll touch on the revenues first and then we'll the expenditures second. As far as uh, the aggregate increase of association revenues, uh, excluding special assessment, we expect an increase of about 0.8%, which compares to an increase of 1.9% in in 2019 and a decrease of 1.5% in 2018. Our membership dues revenue is going to go up. We're going to uh, raise the dues from 550 or up to 550, which is a $5 increase from the 2019 rate. Our special assessment revenue uh, it will stay at 295. Um, our annual so uh, session revenue, we have a change moving from two Grand Rapids from Detroit. We expect a decrease of seven per, just over 7% compared to the 2019. And then our, the other big change that we've got is with our MDA endorsed program royalties. Uh, the 2020 budget was decreased by 14.7%. And that's two, two main things, uh, termination of the office site website services and then also reductions in our Bank of America uh, practice solutions and the GLOVE program as well. The, the, on the good side, though, we, we have the TDSC endorsement royalty, and that's a new line item for us. And that'll be $66,667. And so, so that's, that's good. Um, the non-dues revenue, uh, exclusive of the special assessments, as a percentage of the total revenue equals 68% of our budget. This is up from where it's 67.6 in 2019 and 66.2 in 2018. Now on the expenditure side, what we look at with the expenditures with our budget, we're looking at the historical cost of all the activities, potential cost containment measures, and also strategic planning recommendations and priorities, our current future market and economic conditions and projections. For 2020, we were, uh, expect our aggregate increase of the association expenditures to go up 8.8%, which again, corresponding to remember the, the other one is also going up 0.8%. So we're, we're staying equal, and that's why we're net positive. Our annual, uh, ex annual session expenses are expected to decrease by 9.96% compared to 2019. Our admin administrative expenses will go up 1.19%. Employee benefits, so just a very minor change, 0.24%, and our health insurance expenses uh, experience only a 1.05 increase, so that, that's good as well. Journal expenses, expect to go up 6.15. That, a lot of that was in our website conversion. Uh, uh, last couple things, uh, we, we budget for 26 alternates and delegates for the ADA meeting. Uh, this coming meeting is in Orlando, Florida, which will be better than San Fran or, or Hawaii, which were much more expensive. Um, our MDA House of Delegates expenses are going to be decreasing by 13.61%. We bring in with our special assessment of 295 per, per member assessment, we bring in 955,454, so all, just under a million dollars, and, and that stays that that will stay very similar to what it was last year. And it, it's this re, 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 we see it both on the revenue and expense side of stuff, honestly, because we just spend whatever we. Um, government relation activities, we added a new line item in there, mainly because of our phone to action legislative alert system has been working real well, and that's uh, $8,663, so that, again, a new line item for us to, membership service expenses increases by 5.35%, because we're going to be doing some career, event, career events for D3 and D4 students, both at UD and in Michigan, and that was a $7,500 increase. So again, just in recap, our total revenue, $6,781,016, and expenditures of $6,780,473 for a net surplus of 543 for 2020. Thanks. That's all I have. And then now we will move on to Dr. Vince Benavigna for due simplification and electronic prescribing. Vince? Thank you, Margaret. I'm going to put up a uh, Word document that everybody should be able to see here. There we go. Can everybody see that, Margaret? Very good. Yes. Okay. Yep. 
All right. So I was assigned to talk about the, the dues structure that's changed. Um, it changed at the American Dental Association um, over uh, the course of our ADA meeting in San Francisco recently at the House of Delegates. And the Michigan Dental Association is currently um, considering adopting uh, some similar changes of the dues structure um, that the ADA has already uh, put in place for uh, the upcoming 2021 due cycle. So to summarize, um, the first bullet point um, regarding ADA dues um, talks about uh, recent dental school grads. So if you're a recent dental school grad and you're out your first year, you're gonna pay no dues. Uh, the second year out, you're gonna pay 50% of the dues, uh, the ADA dues. Uh, this is up from the previous 25%. Um, that they paid. Um, the third year out and beyond, you're gonna pay 100% of your dues. Um, this is up from the previously paid 50% um, and 75% for the third and fourth year out respectively. Um, the MDA dues, what, what is being proposed at the MDA uh, is that uh, the recent dental school grads are gonna have the same schedule as the ADA dues schedule. Um, so then you go down to the third bullet point, ADA dues regarding life membership. Um, the, in the life membership category, life members are now um, going to be required by the ADA to pay 100% of the dues. Uh, this is up from a previous 75% uh, of the dues. Uh, the exception is that life members that meet the eligibility requirement for retired membership are exempt from payment of the dues. Um, working life members can apply for a hardship waiver depending on their circumstances. So regarding the MDA dues uh, for life members, um, this is going to be um, talked about at the uh, upcoming uh, Board of Trustees meeting at the MDA. And um, there was not unanimous support for adopting the ADA life membership dues schedule at the MDA membership committee which met recently, um, so it's, it's being kicked up to the MDA Board of Trustees. Uh, the ADA uh, dues uh, student membership uh, is currently $5, and that's going to be unchanged. So um, student membership for ADA are going to continue to pay their $5 a year membership. Um, Postdoc students, um, i.e. residents, uh, pay zero dollars. This is down from a previously paid thirty dollars. Um, regarding ADA special assessments that come out sometimes, um, recent dental school grads will be uh, exempt their first year out so they will not pay any assessments from the ADA. Um, their second year out they will pay 50 percent uh, of the uh, assessment which is up from 25 percent. Um, their uh, uh, their second year out and the third year out and beyond, they're gonna pay the full assessment and that's up from the previously paid 50%. Um, and uh, the fourth year, they only paid 75% previously, so they're gonna pay 100%. Um, next bullet point, ADA special assessments. Um, life members will now pay 100% of any uh, ADA special assessments and that's up from a previously paid 75%. The, uh, there is an exemption uh, of life members uh, that meet the eligibility for the retired category. And so if you're a life retired member, then you're, you're gonna be exempt from all uh, ADA ass assessments. Um, regarding uh, other issues that affect dues, um, the ADA House of Delegates um, decided to kind of factor in uh, the consumer price index and uh, use it as a multiplier for ADA dues. And that, that's an optional thing that the board can look at and decide if they're going to use that multiplier or not uh, on a year by year basis. So basically what, what we're considering here is that you know everybody's overhead goes up usually year by year. And, and um, so to kind of factor in um, that to the dues so that we don't get behind and run a deficit, um, with our ADA dues, they can now fix, factor in the uh, consumer price index. 
Um, the next point uh, is, you know, what is what are the dues? Um, dues, uh, ADA dues for uh, 2020 will be $565. Currently, the MDA dues are $545, um, and the MDA Board of Trustees will be voting this month to set the uh, 2020 dues. So, any questions on that? All right, so I got uh, Michelle Tulek Gorecki on uh, speed dial here, and she hasn't sent me any any uh, texts. So I think uh, I think I'm okay on what I said here. Hopefully, um, and that that completes my report for the uh, uh, use simpl simplification summary. Dr. Benavinia, there was a question. Oh. When does effect? When does it take effect? Uh, Twenty twenty one. I don't see any other questions, so. All right. Like we're ready to move on. Very good. So I guess I'm up next uh, to talk about uh, electronic prescribing, right? Okay. So um, Senate Bill 248 um, would amend the public health code to do the following. Uh, beginning January 1st, 2021, it would require a prescriber or his or her agent to transmit a prescription, including a prescription for a controlled substance electronically to a pharmacy of the patient's choice. Um, it would also require them to specify certain circumstances under which the requirement to transmit a prescription electronically would not apply. It would allow a prescriber to apply to the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, LARA, for a waiver and require LARA to grant the waiver if the prescriber could not electronically uh, transmit a prescription due to certain circumstances. Specify that if the federal centers for Medicare and Medicaid services delayed the Medicare requirement for electronic transmission of prescriptions for controlled substances beyond January 1st, 2021, LARA could delay the implementation of the electronic transmission requirement and require, and lastly require a disciplinary subcommittee to assess a fine against the licensee who violated Bill's provisions. So I think uh, an article in the, in the um, MDA journal would probably be in order for this and I would volunteer to do that and uh, kind of explain this in, in a more detailed fashion in the journal for our membership. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Benavinia. Is there any questions? Uh electronic prescribing or on the due simplification from anyone? Seeing none, we are ready to move on to Dr. Vince Lizio, Policy on Workforce. Vince? <laughs> All right, so basically um, the um, uh, Policy on Workforce um, was written, the rules were written before the dental therapist rule. Um, so one of the things that we needed to do is kind of align some of our rules and policies with the dental, dental therapy, whether we agree with it or not. I mean, it's something that we need to follow through on. So um, we kind of reviewed the policy and seeing what's appropriate. And there were a couple of rules originally that went through the a couple of principles. Um, and what it was decided is two principles were kind of, kind of be marked off. The ones that we were gonna maintain is the MDA maintains that only a dentist provides comprehensive oral health care. And the dentist has ultimate responsibility for dental care, providing his or her direction and supervision. Um, the other thing that we wanted to maintain, this is also something that I believe is really important just because um, it, with dental therapy, we wanna make sure that we are still maintaining the things that we can do. And then the other thing is the MDA recognizes the dentist as leader of the dental team and is responsible for maintaining one standard of care for all patients. What we removed because it was probably was kind of uh, what's proposed being removed is a thing that um, the MDA supports current team members. Current team members weren't dental therapists and should be used to the maximum. And then the MDA maintains that only a dentist can diagnose oral conditions, prescribe treatment and medications, basically because the law contradicted that. So that's something that um, is gonna kind of, is the guideline just to put us in line with um, kind of current law in the state. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions about that. 
Any comments? No? We don't have any at this time, Dr. Lizzie. So, so we'll go ahead. That's the easy one. Moving on, assignment of benefits. Okay, and the next thing is assignment of benefits, and this is something I think everyone would be very um, happy with. But it's several states have passed laws um, recently that um, uh, trying to uh, um, varying degrees requiring third party payers to follow the patient directive to pay the dentist directly for covered services. So apparently, the MDA has never had a, um, uh, a policy on this. Um, so the Committee on Governmental Insurance Affairs recommended the policy. Um, uh, that the right of each dentist to accept or reject the assignment of benefits from any dental benefit plan and be it further resolved that the association supports the right of every patient to assign his or her benefits to the treating dentist and to have the assignment honored by the third party payer and be it further resolved that when a third party payer submits payment directly to the patient, contrary to the patient's authorized preference, the dentist has the right to request payment directly from the patient. If the patient declines, then it's a third party payer's responsibility to submit the correct payment to the dentist within 15 days of being notified of the incorrect payment and to submit the payment to the dentist whether or not the third party payer has received reimbursement from the patient. So obviously this is a policy that we'd like to go and um, what's important is this is allows our um, uh, people in, in the state and lobbyists and to kind of let them know this is what we believe is important um, and that we want to get past through. Like I said, there's been several states in the past varying degrees um, legislation in this realm, and I think it'd be very powerful and very good for us. So I don't know if anyone would have any problems with that, but any questions or concerns or what we can do? We have a quiet bunch tonight. There aren't any <laughs> questions. Um, thank you, Dr. Lizio. Um, next, we'll be moving on to Dr. Mike Mayhofer on policy on the student loan repayment. Great, thank you, Margaret. Um, hi to everybody. Um, I've been asked uh, to discuss two of the agenda items that we're gonna be taking up at our board meeting next weekend. Uh, both of these agenda items have come from our Committee on Government and Insurance Affairs. Uh, the first one deals with uh, Senate Bill 343 regarding student loan repayments. Senate Bill 343 would raise the maximum amount of loan repayment paid by the state through the Michigan State Loan Repayment Program. Currently, dentists can enter into a contract with the state to earn up to $200,000 in student loan repayment for up to eight years of service in an eligible practice setting. Senate Bill 343 would raise that amount to $250,000 for providers who now agree to serve 10 or more years in an eligible practice setting. However, the problem with this is that um, this bill does not appropriate any additional money toward the entire program. Therefore, by allowing for increased expenditures per participant, the bill would decrease the total number of contracts that the Department of Health and Human Services can enter into. Now, currently, our Michigan Dental Association doesn't have any policy regarding student dental loan repayments. However, they have concerns that because the Michigan State Loan Repayment Program is already stretched beyond its limits, and many dentists are finding it difficult to qualify for grant money because of the limited funding, that the increased amount of healthcare providers and the increased amount of, student, of, of healthcare providers of student loan debt, that this is gonna be a problem. So they have recommended that our board and our association remain neutral and they have proposed instead a resolution that, they're, that we're, gonna, we're gonna look at next week. And the resolution is as such. It says that the MDA support legislation to increase funding for the Michigan State Loan Repayment Program. So we're neither for or against the bill as it stands. We're gonna remain neutral on it, but we're stating our policy that we'd like to see more money come into the program. Uh, and that, that recommendation is, uh, what's coming before us next week. The, the other agenda item from the Committee on Government and Insurance Affairs has to do with permanent revocation of license. This, this deals with House Bill 4372, which would require permanent revocation of a health professional's license if that healthcare professional is convicted for sexual penetration under the pretext of medical treatment. 
Uh, this, this, this is one of many bills that's been made in response to the Larry Nasser scandal. Um, so I think this is kind of going to be a slam dunk for the board. Uh, the resolution that uh, CGIA has put in front of us states the following, that the MDA support legislation to permanently revoke licenses of healthcare providers who are convicted of sexual penetration under the pretext of medical treatment. It's important that I point out that both of these agenda items are on our board consent calendar. So what that means is, is that if no member of the board has any objections to this or doesn't wish to discuss it, it'll be passed unanimously by the board. So if anybody listening tonight has any concerns or wants to discuss this, they should probably talk to a member of the board so that it could be pulled off the consent calendar. Otherwise, these will probably both go through as a slam dunk, and that's why they're on the consent calendar. And that completes my report. Are there any questions for Dr. Mayhofer? Seeing none, it looks like our um, virtual trustee forum is going to be short tonight. Once again, um, our board meeting is going to be held on October 10th and 11th. And Friday night, we will be hearing from both of the deans, and Friday, we'll be hearing from some of the agenda items you heard and more. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me um, via my email or cell phone or any one of the trustees that are on this meeting um, this evening. Our next trustee forum will be on December 3rd, and I hope to see you all there. Thank you very much for attending, and thank you um, all the panelists for speaking. Have a great evening.